good afternoon world from General Luna. We're in town, aren't we? <laughs> Story's got a mouthful of bruschetta. We are at my Greek taverna. Jay should be sitting there. His food has arrived, but he's had to run to the ATM down the road. He's not actually running. <laughs> he drove, he took the car. We are actually in town today to do our visa extension, which we tried to do last week. And the immigration guys weren't here, which we explained about. Um, so today is the day that they were back. So that's why we're back in town today. And we've just had a big chat with the guys from the Sirigao Immigration and got lots of information actually to share, which we will do later on. Nice dance story. But Jay had to go and get some more money out because it was a little bit more than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so we'll fill you in on that later. But while we are here and we're waiting for our money to go through, we've ordered some food. This is our lunch. It's a bit of a late lunch today, but me and Story are sharing these dishes here. Story chose olives. I chose the bruschetta. And we're going to share the falafel and hummus. And then Jay has got a hummus wrap with falafel as well over there. How are the olives? Good. Oh, yeah, I here. All done. Okay. Yeah, paid, processed, get our stuff back next week. Yeah, next week. It usually takes a week. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful day. That meal cost us 877 pesos and 40 centinos. <laughs> I don't even know what the micro units are here. Yeah. You never see them, do you? No. But it's a reasonable price meal. Yeah, I think it's a little bit expensive for the portion sizes. It's yeah. quite small amounts of food. Yeah, I'm definitely not full up. I could have had twice that. Still, we really wanted olives. So we got them, but you could buy a, an entire jar of olives for the same price. You only get about 10, but anyway, she enjoyed them. It's been quite a while since we've come down this way. This is the General Luna Boulevard. It used to be basically just this, and then they had all these like kind of like local burger shops down here. They've been working on this place for several years, but it never quite got finished. I'm not sure exactly what they're planning, but this is all new. They have this section here. They're probably going to put an I Love Chargal sign up. There's already one. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Classic. Yeah, there it is over there. Yeah, you're right. I'll have a look at that later. Oh, it's quite nice though with the palm trees going down there. It's very limey beach. <laughs> There's a lot of the tour boats out at Guyam, just there. So the reason why we've stopped here is because we want to let you know what's going on with our visa situation. So the immigration come to this island first week of every month and they normally set up in the restaurant that we were next to when we first started today's video and we've been going there for several weeks now to try and sort out what's going on because they had some system issues over the last few weeks but it's all sorted now cost a little bit more than we thought it was going to cost yeah we had some penalties to pay yeah even though it wasn't our fault like, <laughs> it wasn't our fault we no. were there early every single month yeah it's that cat was that a man pretending it's a man, to be a cat? But he's done a really good, that was a really good cat impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was, it a, was man. a man. Yeah. yeah pretending to be a cat. There you go. <laughs> so now that that's all sorted, yes, we had to pay some penalties, but they did tell us that things are going to get a little bit easier for foreigners here because they are building a brand new visa office yeah. right here. Yes, that's why we've come to the boulevard. That's where we are now, and the tourism office is just over there, right on the. Pier. Pier. Pier deck that goes out to sea where you get your tour boats from to go to the islands. The tourism office is located there and that is where they're going to set up their own office. I think they're going to share the same office space but they're, I don't know, he said something about construction is ongoing so they must be building something else there as well. But they are aiming to be up and set up here like permanently um, by March of this year which is great. 
Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that. Actually, we'll go and walk around here and show you what we're seeing. Yeah. And we'll show you what the office looks like at the moment. Yeah. It is good for us because at the moment we pay 1,000 pesos extra for the privilege of not having to go and do our visa over in Sirigal ourselves. So we pay like a 1,000 peso fee for them to do that for us. And we won't have to do that when they're here. <laughs> So construction is ongoing, it looks like they're putting people to work. There's the I love Shargal sign, which is very similar to the one they've got in Dapa and also the one that they've got in Surigao City. I don't know what they're planning on doing with these buildings over here. Probably restaurants. I did hear that they were thinking of making a Jollibee, which is like the kind of Philippines version of, you know, mega fast food chain. I'm not sure if they'll actually go with that because a lot of the mayors and councillors here don't actually like the idea of having a Jollibee. But we'll see. And at the end of this, I'll show you the pier. There's the building right there. It's actually a well-known section of the island because everybody comes to do their island tours. So most people will know where it is. And you can see right there, the General Lunar Tourism Office. That is gonna be the new immigration office. So we'll be able to sort out our long-term stays here while Story goes and enjoys herself in the sea. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Story going for a little swim while we go and do our visas. <laughs> It'll bring a whole new meaning to like, let's go and get, go to the office yeah. and get the visa done. Mum life. Like carrying a load of rubbish. Lumbered with all the stuff. I know. <laughs> Every time Story says, can I bring a soft toy out? I'm like, what's the point? You're just going to give it to mum. <laughs> and it always happens, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so this is it. This is how life gets easier for foreigners here. Being able to sort out visa options from where you live is going to change the game for us. It's going to reduce our prices down massively. It just improves the quality of living in many different ways. Every time a new option of convenience arrives. I read also this morning that they are going to start allowing certain visa holders to check in online. Uh -huh. So you don't actually have to go to an office. But I don't think it will apply for the visa that we have, more like mm. for retirees and people that have like the mega, mega long-term residency visas and stuff. I heard that you can do that online, but you still have to go to an office. To collect it yes or so you won't so have to soon it's not fully online no but it will be oh, okay. so it's, it's being approved and again they're waiting for the paperwork ah, okay. something else that happens <laughs> today we spoke with the immigration about the new digital nomad visa so we've mentioned this a few times yeah. and how it will make life for our kind of people a lot easier especially if you want to be a remote worker you want to come here and do the work that you do in your home country but here in the Philippines a digital nomad visa is being implemented all over Asia certain parts of Africa Bermuda many places are doing this now to move forward the workforce movement yeah. Barbados, Barbados Korea, yeah. so, uh, South Korea is doing it as well I think even Japan's thinking about it aren't Japan they? is doing it this year as well yeah so the Philippines are jumping onto this trend as well yeah. <laughs> and it was actually approved by the governor of this island he was mm -hmm. the one that said I'm gonna make this happen because there's so many digital nomads coming over from Bali and they're not finding a suitable solution for work. So it's been approved by the government, which we mentioned before, but the immigration here said they haven't been given the official documents yet. Yeah, the, the IRR. IRR, the rules and regulations haven't been put in place yet, but once that has happened, it will be passed down through all the offices throughout the country. Um, like nationwide and that will be it, it will be a go. Yeah, so if you want to come and work from any of the 7,000 islands here in the <laughs> Philippines, as long as you can like get to one of the immigration yeah. offices, yeah. then you'll be able to stay here on a digital nomad visa. Yeah. But as of now, there's still no idea of how much it costs. Yes. And one thing that we've discussed is whether it covers dependents as well, like your child. Yeah. Because Sasha and I can get a digital nomad visa perhaps because of work or savings or yeah. you know um however else yeah. you fund your time here yeah. but story doesn't work of course she's yeah. a student so she would have to have some kind of dependency and um, we're not sure if the digital nomad visa covers that yeah i mean yeah we can't speak for this one yet because obviously it hasn't been set in motion yet but i know the one i read about for south korea a child is classed as your dependent and as a married couple we would only need one of the visa oh, so it's kind of like a family you unit you got it and then i would be your spouse and then our dependent is story so you can actually all go on to one visa okay so, so yeah. hopefully it'll be a similar kind of situation rather than us both having to do it 
I don't know. Well, it That's depends. It. Yeah, you could either do a family situation or you could do like an yeah. individual work situation. Yeah. But as soon as we find out what the actual deal is, once they've figured it out, we'll be able to talk about it in more detail. Yeah. It's good though, it's all moving good. in the right direction I feel. Oh yeah, I mean the world we're looking towards more remote working allows people to change their living circumstances, yeah. you know, like the weather, the, you know, the cold winters, yeah. if you want to escape that. The cost of living in the UK is skyrocketing and to make things easier for foreigners to escape their countries and like live out a portion of their life and yeah. spread the economy around, spread the wealth around if, it, if you want to see it that way as well it's good for the local people here yeah. and it's good for people who are looking for a different lifestyle and yeah that's all right maybe they're waiting for the tour to finish we're just taking a wander through the local market that used to be here on the boulevard behind all of the tourism office people used to come here to get their food and stuff for the island tours but it looks like a lot of it has been taken away and closed down there's the village water pump right it's like what we've got in our land after the storm that was essential here it's just like a daily use thing I do wonder how they choose which roads to renovate and which ones not to because these back roads here are still pretty undrivable. Like in a car you would ruin your suspension over time and yet a lot of life happens around these parts. Here's the old white beard coffee, one of the originals from back in the day. And this is the location of the new dental clinic. Actually it's the same dental clinic that we always used to go, we showed it before but they've moved location. So they're here now, down by the boulevard. So if you need any teeth work done, you can do everything here. Even like really intense tooth work, they can do it here. So she had your teeth whitened there, didn't you, once? Yeah, we all had a check up and a clean. Yeah. It's worth it. We even asked them about big things like root canals and everything. Mom, yeah, for my mum. Yeah, because we don't need that, but like my mum was looking at it. And they do it all here on the island, so it's pretty good. I think this is the big municipal gym hall. I will say that having lived here now almost in our fourth year, life is definitely getting easier for foreigners because there's more services here, there's bigger hardware stores, there's better immigration options, there's a lot more cash on the island, a lot more ATMs, not all of them work, but at least there's more of them to choose from. I will say as well, I've noticed there's been a lot more consistent visitors here as well from foreign countries. Even during Christmas time, there were quite a few couples here that celebrated Christmas on the island because they definitely wouldn't have been able to leave in time. And now it's like somewhat into January and there's still quite a lot of people already here. Yeah. Like the island tours look like they're fully stocked, yeah, you know, packed, everyone's out. Yeah. So, you know, like, especially because this time of year, the weather would normally be terrible. Yes. And yeah, we're having... We said this yesterday to each other that the weather this January has been beautiful, whereas last year it was very, very, very rainy, floods yeah. and just not a nice time to be here. But this year, it's completely different. Yeah, we couldn't cross the island because yeah. like, we were off island, weren't we? But yeah. people were messaging us saying, don't come home yet because you won't <laughs> because be able to get your car back onto the island. It's completely flooded, yeah. So you many couldn't floods. even get to General Luna because one of the two of the main roads were completely above water. You couldn't even get a car through. Yeah. So, and this year we've had lots of beautiful sunny days. Yeah, it's been very changed. good. So anybody who's come here at this time of year, yeah. they're having a very lucky time. <laughs> That is it from us today. I'm going to do the shout out, and today's shout out is going to Gerard Padua, another long term Eight Mile member. Thank you so much, Gerard, for being with us for over seven months now. Hope you're enjoying the weekend vlogs. <laughs> uh, we're going to head back to Poppy now, and I hope you found this little video informative. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.